What's up guys, Cam for Investors Underground. Welcome to lesson five of eight in our beginner's trading guide, where we're gonna be talking about computer setups and trading platforms. If you've landed on this video and you haven't seen the previous four lessons in the guide, you really should check them out. You can click this green button here to go back to the start and watch it from there. It's really the way this guide was intended. So we've been scooting through all these lessons in the beginner's guide and I'm really happy with the content we've been covering. To make sure you don't miss out on any, you really should be subscribed to the YouTube channel. It's free and all you need to do is click a button here. And then that way you won't miss out on new videos whenever we put them out. So we've got a ton of things to get through in this lesson. Let's get started. I'm going to kick things off by having a quick chat about work environment. And basically what I wanted to talk about on this point is that a clear space equals a clear mind. And while we might really enjoy trading and we think it's fun, we really have to treat it as a professional kind of thing. And while I love trading in my home office and I really think it's great that I don't have to commute to work or deal with traffic or annoying co-workers that can reduce your focus, you really have to have it set up in the right kind of way. And what I mean by this is you need to be in a space that's conducive to quality thinking and quality output. And I've traded at both sides of the wealth spectrum, you know, from when I was broke trading in the corner of a very small room in a shared apartment with a desk that I bought from Ikea that I stuck two monitors on that I was always nervous would fall over because it was so small that it became top heavy from the weight of the screens to a financial position now where I'm a little more comfortable I've got my own space and a really large clear desk with no disturbances or distractions. And I can confidently say that I work a lot better now than I did when I was crammed up in the corner of a room. And I understand that different people start trading with different circumstances, but keeping your desk clear, maybe looking at a slightly larger one for $100 instead of a $50 one from Ikea, and making sure that ergonomically your chair's the right height and the desk is at the right level and the screens are the right brightness can really make a big difference in terms of your productivity while you're trading. And my last point here is to get comfortable. And I don't mean trading from bed on your laptop while watching Game of Thrones kind of comfortable. I'm talking comfortable in your working environment. Make sure that the air is the right temperature. Wear comfortable clothing and do all the little things that you think might be able to help you get in a good headspace when you're approaching the markets. So we always see these traders with these huge multi-monitor setups. And I get the question all the time, is it necessary? Do you need them all to start trading? So another word for screen area is screen real estate. And the way that I kind of look at it is, although you don't need a bunch of real estate, monitors are cheap. And the more that you can see, the more potential that you might have to be able to make money. Now, that's not saying that if you have a bunch of monitors, you're gonna be a superstar trader because being able to watch charts and being able to trade them is a very different thing. But if you are a great trader, you really wanna be able to track more charts and you can do that if you've got more screens to be able to look at. And with screen real estate, it's not only about tracking charts, but it's also about having your tweet deck open, having a chat room open, and different other resources that you might be using to scan or an internet browser to look up news. If you're a person who can process information quickly, then more information is usually better. But a key point here is to not overwhelm yourself. You don't wanna have so much information that you're in an overload mode and you can't even focus on one thing on one screen, let alone a hundred things on 20 screens. And while bigger is usually better in this instance, you can always start small and upgrade later. You know, if you start with a couple of screens and then you can add two more when you feel like you've outgrown them. I know that you're all waiting for some in-office footage. Let's get to it already. So this is my trading setup. I've got four 24 inch monitors that are on a pretty hefty monitor stand. I'm usually viewing around eight charts with their own level two windows and also their own time and sales, but I'll go into the specifics about that bit later. I leave this space on the right hand side for the two chat rooms we use in the Investors Underground trading community, the momentum room for intraday trading and the swing trading room for overnight holds. My PC tower is tucked away under my desk, so I've unplugged it to give you a bit of a look in the light. 
It's a pretty high-end spec, Intel i7 with 32GB RAM and a powerful graphics card to be able to run all the monitors. The process is water-cooled, which might be a little overkill for trading, but Nate and I do video lessons and screen capture every day as part of the Investors Underground service, so I use most of the horsepower when I'm editing all that for our members to watch. So it's a pretty sweet setup. Everyone asks me the exact tech specs, so here they are. The monitors are Dell U2412M. They're a 1920 by 1200 aspect ratio screen, 24 inch in size. The monitor stand is an EZM quad LCD monitor mount and the specific code for it is here. As I mentioned, the PC tower is an i7 with 32 gig RAM, GTX 980 graphics. And one thing that's super important, and I think one big leap forward from the normal way a computer would be specced, you know, five or 10 years ago, is solid state drives. And I see a lot of people in desktops get, you know, a small solid state and then use a spindle disk for storage. And I don't think that's the right way to do things. One big solid state with all of your apps, your operating system, all of your music, your movies, everything like that, in my opinion, will have your whole computer running a lot faster than if you do spindle and solid state combination. And my last point here is choose components in your PC tower that are all low noise rated. So go for bigger fans rather than smaller ones because they don't have to spin as fast to be able to push as much air. Spend an extra 20 or 30 bucks on a case that has good sound insulation and deadening because that constant hum in the background can get a little tiresome when you've got your computer on for 12 hours a day. Let's take a quick look at Nate's setup and then we're gonna be moving on to navigating around the platform. So it was pretty obvious when I would spec'd out my PC and Nate's as well that he wasn't going to be outdone by me. <laughs> so although we bought the same tower together, he's upgraded his a little to make sure that it's better than mine. So he's running five 28 inch ASUS 4K monitors. And on Windows 7, the 4K monitors don't work so well because it makes all the numbers in your trading platform super small. But Windows 10 seemed to have fixed that, so he's running Windows 10 on his. He's got a custom sit stand geek desk and that's one where if you're feeling lazy you can sit down and if you're feeling active you can stand up while you're trading and it's on a hydraulic lift so you don't have to do anything except press a button. It's got the same tower as I mentioned except we had to throw another graphics card in there because each graphics card has the ability to be able to power four monitors and he's running five so we had an extra graphics card. So although his setup's better than mine, I spent the money I saved on golf lessons, so no points for guessing who's better at that game. So again, you don't need to be going and spending thousands of dollars like we do on our computer setups. You can probably get set up for under $1,000. A mid-range i7 processor, you know, 16 gig of RAM, a 256 or a 500 gig solid state drive with two monitors. You know, if you're a smart shopper, you're probably getting that for eight or 900 bucks as the full bundle. You can always add a graphics card that can do four and add in a couple of extra monitors afterwards. So again, no need to be going out and spending five or 10 grand on a computer setup. So if you know anything about Nate, you'll know that he's a complete tradeaholic. He hates being separated from the market. So when he's on holiday or on the road or in an airplane, He's always trading and there is a hardware solution to be able to help you do that. So what you're looking at is an external USB screen. So this doesn't require a separate power jack. You don't need to lug around a big adapter or some kind of wall unit. You can pack these pretty thin USB external monitors into a laptop bag and get a bunch more screen real estate without a lot of weight penalty. They're not super expensive. You can get them for less than $200 a piece. I'd recommend grabbing two and make sure you go for ones that are 1920 by 1080 full HD because that's probably the resolution of your laptop screen. The model to choose is an ASUS MB169B+, and I think the plus stands for high definition. So be sure you're getting the right model. This is also a great option for people who are starting out who are trading from a laptop to add screen real estate at a very low price point without having to go and get a big desktop setup. Alrighty, enough about computers. Let's talk a little bit about the trading platform that we like to use. So Das Trader or Direct Access Software 
is the trading platform that both Nate and I use as our primary means to get charts, level two, time and sales, and other market data. And I wanna start by saying that we have no financial affiliation with DAS at all. We don't receive any money from them, but feedback used from Nate and Investors Underground is often taken into consideration to implement changes on the platform where we see there could be improvements or features that we'd like to add. So it's a pretty cool kind of relationship that we've got with them. They've been in business for around 10 years and while the design of the platform is a little old school, it's very robust. It's a bit of a no frills platform, but it really does all the things that you need it to do. Alrighty, let's take a bit of a look at the platform. I've currently got this set up as a one screen kind of template. If you guys are using, you know, one laptop or one computer screen, this might be the way that you would like to have it set up. So first things first, here's where your account info is all displayed. In this box, you should see buying power, equity, realized and unrealized P&L, tickets, and amount of shares traded. As this is a trial account, there's no actual equity. However, once you go through the account application process and fund your account, the amount that you fund with will show up in this equity column. Below this box is the position area, and below that is the area that displays open orders. We'll explore that in more detail shortly. Let's have a closer look at the charting area and some indicators. Most of the experienced guys at Investors Underground choose to display their data on candlestick charts, watching price and volume. Up here, you can scroll through the different time frames you wish to display the candles on. If you want to add indicators to the chart, you can double click on the chart and do so here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a moving average. So I'm going to double click on that. And I want to edit the way that the moving average tracks. So I'm going to double click on that and I can change the average period number. I can change it between a simple or a exponential moving average. I'm going to change this, I guess, to a, I don't know, a 12 period moving average. Hit commit, commit again. And there you can see the moving average on the chart. I'm going to go ahead and remove that moving average. Double click, remove, but you can have as many indicators as you like on this. It's completely up to you what you have on your charts. As I said earlier, we usually have price and volume and that's pretty much it. Commit, and you can see that indicator is gone. So if we want to edit what kind of chart we're looking at, whether it's a candle, line or bar, double click on price, we can come in here choose what kind of chart it is. And then this little place down here is a show trades and show orders box. What we do is we tick them and I'll show you what it does in a moment, but basically it puts little arrows where you've executed a trade. You can also mess with the colors of, you know, the way that you want all of this stuff to look. So it's uh, pretty customizable here. So let's move on to the business end of the platform the level two or montage window. And we're gonna to look to see how you use that to place a trade. So right now we're gonna look at the level two area or the montage window. And that's this area here. We've got a little spot up the top left-hand corner to type in the ticker. And as you change the ticker here, I've got it set up so that it also changes the chart and the time in sales and you do that by dragging this anchor over to these two areas and that will link them all together so that when you type in a ticker here, for example, it will bring up that in the chart and the time and sales. Down the bottom here is where all the order execution takes place. So you've got number of shares here. You've got which market maker you want to route by. You've got your price if you want to do a limit order, or you can choose a market order. So I'm going to give you an example of a trade now, long a thousand of these shares here at the market. Um, and as you can see, a little arrow showed up. I got filled on this paper trade and I own a thousand shares at $4.55 average cost. 
and this is my open positions box. So what I want to do is I want to go and sell them, but I don't want to sell it until it gets to $4.59. So I've changed my price there. I put in a sell order and now this is the open orders box. So this hasn't been filled yet. And I'm waiting, as you can see on the chart, for it to come up and go into this arrow. And then this will get filled and I'll book the trade and exit for a gain. So as you can see, I'm out and it's uh, popping up. Uh, I realized $40 and that was uh, an entry and an exit on that trade. So up here, you've got the closed positions window and you can see that, you know, I bought ICLD $4.55 and I sold it at $4.59, 1,000 shares, making a $40 profit. If you like what you're watching so far, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up on YouTube. You can comment down in the comment section or subscribe to the YouTube channel for free videos like this. So although we can't go over the full features of the platform because we're kind of restricted by time, I'm going to give you guys a few tips and tricks within the platform that might make it easier for you to trade on a daily basis. If you want a real in-depth look at the platform, we spend probably a couple of hours in the DVD courses going over very specific things that we use to reduce commissions, get sharper entries and exits, and better utilize the trading hardware that you have to have the platform running at an optimum level. If you're interested in getting signed up for the Investors Underground community, you can drop me an email. It's cam at investorsunderground.com. Let me know a little bit about your trading so far, and I'll respond to you personally with some of my thoughts on the best way for you to get up to speed as quickly as possible. Something that's also cool about the DAS platform is down in this uh, bottom right-hand corner window, you've got the ability to scroll through your favorite tickers. So, you know, let's add in ICLD to that one. And I can go ARNA, Apple, AXN, BIOC, CYTX, etc., etc. It's a real great way of uh, being able to make sure that the tickers you like to watch are around. Now, you can uh, resize these windows to suit your own needs and all that kind of stuff. One thing that I've done to save you all some space is I've hidden the title bar on all of these boxes. So uh, if this is uh, kind of confusing you a little, if I show title bar here, basically you can see you get that up the top there, but it takes up a little bit of the chart and you know, I really value screen real estate. So I always go uh, no title bar on all of these. So let's put this all together to give you a bit of a sample of what it might look like with two monitors, the platform and the Investors Underground chat room. So what you're looking at now is a two monitor setup. The left monitor would be here and the right monitor would be here. We've already explored what we had on the left monitor, but if we have a look at the right monitor, what I usually do is compress the charts a little so they're a little stubbier but what it means is I get to fit in the Investors Underground chat room. And this is where the moderators and the members of Investors Underground are calling out their positions, talking about what they're trading and why they're trading it, and also alerting news and market moving events that you really need to be on top of if you're going to expect to be the best at this game. So with this setup, you're checking out four charts, four level two, four time and sales, the Investors Underground chat room, and I think this is a pretty good way to keep an eye on what's going on in the market. So the last point I want to cover in this lesson is that having a computer and knowing the platform does not mean that you're a trader. And I guess my point here is I'm going to say that the top three questions I get from new traders are which broker do you use? What platform do you use? And what kind of computer setup do you have? And there's a reason that I've left those subjects towards the end of this beginner video series. And that's because these three things will not help you become a better trader. Sure, you need a platform to trade on and a broker to trade through and some kind of computer to execute your trades. But all those things are just vehicles to be able to 
execute your trading expertise. If you don't know what you're doing, then it doesn't matter how cheap your commissions are. It doesn't matter how fast your platform is. It doesn't matter how great your computer is and how many screens you've got. If you don't have the foundation in place, you're gonna blow up your account, never use the platform again, and have a $5,000 PC sitting on your desk that has too many screens to really do anything else. The right education and foundation is much more important in terms of whether you're gonna have success at trading. So try and keep that in mind when you're allocating resources to computers and platforms and brokerages versus allocating resources to what's really gonna make you a great trader, which is education and a foundation of understanding so you know what's going on. So that's about it for today. In our next lesson, I'm gonna give in to all you guys and talk about brokers. So we're gonna be chatting about what to look for in a broker and some of the options out there that might best suit people. Again, if you've got any questions or you wanna chat about your trading, it's cam at investorsunderground.com. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'm looking forward to putting out the next one.